Hey guys, Jaden here. And today I'm back with my second true crime video. And I haven't did a true crime video in a minute. Yeah, the last one was like last summer and I did the Precious Doe case. But now I'm doing the case of Imani Moss. Now this took place back in 2013 and it is considered a Cinderella story because the Cinderella effect is involved. If you don't know what that means, Cinderella effect is when a stepchild is abused by the step parent. It's kind of like how in the Cinderella story where her stepmom is abusive to her. Yeah. Before I start the video, I just want to warn you guys that this video contains stuff like child abuse and death of child. And if you don't want to hear about that right now, if you can't hear about it, then I recommend just clicking off the video. Just look out for yourself. And I'll see you in another video, whether that be animation, AI cover, I'm happy opinions. Yeah, but take care of yourself. Okay, now get into the video. This is how it goes. So, Imani Gabrielle Moss was born on April 23rd, 2003, to her dad, Iman Moss, and her mom. Now, her mom had a lot of substance abuses, abuse problems, and just wasn't able to take care of all her kids. So, she signed over her parental rights. And Imani was in the custody of her dad, Iman. See if they got the summer name. When Imani was growing up, her dad would take her to the Freedom Christian Church in Georgia. And while they were going to the church, Iman met this new girl named Tiffany. And she was a preschool teacher. And they would talk when they were at church. They would go out together. And at some point became a couple. And in July 2009, they got married. While they were married, they were going to have two more kids together, a son named Tristan and a daughter named Emma. So it sounds like it's going good now, but no, it's not. Because come March 2010, when Imani was about six, she got a bad report card at school, but was too scared to go home with a bad report card because she thought her parents were going to hurt her and tell the school that, that Tiffany actually beat her with a curtain rod for not doing her homework. And not only this, but she had scabs, bruises, and welts all over her body. So the school was disturbed to hear to find out about this. Set her down at the police station and Tiffany was arrested for child abuse. Now Georgia Division I mean Georgia Division Family of Children's Services or G D FCS for short, and get involved. And Tiffany would admit to this. And she'd also admit to beating Omani with a brown leather belt for eating too slowly. Really? You're going to beat the little girl for eating too slowly? What the hell's wrong with you? So Tiffany would get sentenced to five years probation and had to go to parenting classes. And Omani was taken out of their home and put into her grandma home. Iman, Iman's mother. Now her grandmother was Robin Moss. She would get sent to live with her for about six months so Tiffany can work on her stuff. And and Imani's school performance started doing really, way better. And she started doing better in school, getting good grades. And it was just a much better living environment for her at her grandma's house. But when those six months were up, she was brought back into her dad and stepmom's home. Now, Robin pleaded with Iman to just let Imani stay with her because it would be better that way. But now nah, he insisted on taking her home. And things only got worse from there. Uh, and not only did Robin, like, try to fight for custody, but, you know, if Tiffany, with this record for child abuse, she would also get fired from her job as a preschool teacher. And she blamed Imani for that, even though it's her fault for beating her. And the abuse would get worse over the years. And in July 2012, Amani ran away from home. And she actually ran to the apartment off, apartment complex office. So that she ran away from home because Tiffany tied her up with a belt and threw her in a cold shower. And when Imani and Tiffany were crying about this, they just covered it up by accusing her of lying which of course they would. 
Of, of course, they're going to laugh. They're abusing the little girl. The second time she ran away from home, she was found sleeping in the bushes of another apartment complex. And the police officer found her. And Imani told the cop that she ran away from home because Tiffany was being mean to her. No surprise there. But guess what? So this cop informed the GDFCS about it and also filed runaway and curfew violation charges against Imani trying to make sure that she will see a juvenile court judge. Like, are you serious? Like, what the hell? This girl is literally getting abused at home. And this is the first time they're hearing about this. They've heard about it plenty of times before. You know, with the March 2010 incident, all the running away from home. They looked into all that, but didn't try to help her. If anything, they blamed her for it. Like, I'm sorry, this is just, this is another one of those child abuse cases where nobody takes it seriously. And don't worry, because I'm gonna cover plenty more cases like this in the future, but come on, let's go back to the story. So the Moss family would continue to move all over Georgia throughout 2011 and summer 2013. But get this, Mother's Day 2013, Iman's sister, Sharonice, invited the Moss family to her house and where Robin would be there too. But when Robin and Sharonice saw Imani, they noticed that her hair had been cut. Now, Amani had this long hair that she would always decorate. She had to do her hair. This time, it was just cut short. So, Robin and Sharon East went over to Tiffany and was like, what happened to her hair? And all Tiffany told them was, if you act ugly, you should look ugly. That means she cut it. <laughs> because Imani was getting in trouble and acting up. I'm on bet she wasn't acting up. Tiffany was just doing it to be the bitch that she is. Not only was Imani's hair missing, but she also was very, like, really shy and timid, much more than they remembered her being, because Imani growing up was a very loud and vibrant child, and now she was the complete opposite. So they were concerned. And the, moss, the mosses, ooh, Imani and Tiffany said, that after the 2012-2013 school year was over, they were going to pull her out of public school and homeschool her. And, you know, Sharon E strongly objected to it and tried to get, like, what's it called, GDFCS involved, tried to report to them, but they just didn't care. And Mother's Day 2013 will be the last time Imani's extended family ever saw her alive. By fall 2013, the Mosses moved into this new apartment complex in Lawrenceville, Georgia, and Imani would always be inside. Like, even the neighbors said that they would see the younger kids outside playing, but they never saw Imani. Like, they never knew about her because they never, like, hardly ever saw her. And let me tell you, Iman was working two jobs, so he wasn't home too much. So like he would go work in the morning, then come back a little bit at about four o'clock and then go to another job. And on the weekends, he would be home watching the kids and then Tiffany would go out with her friends. And during this time, like on the weekends, when it was his turn to watch them, Imani would eat more because during the week when Tiffany was there, she would starve Imani. And there's no records to indicate that Tiffany was abusive to her kids, just Imani. But Tiffany fed and took care of her own kids, but deprived Amani of food. This is very sickening. This is one of the worst cases I've ever seen in my life. Like she would send Iman pictures of meals that she made for her kids and would text him to bring home cookie dough so she could make cookies. And Imani confined to her room, not allowed to eat, would like smell the bacon cookies and we taught him with the fact that she couldn't have none. I can't make this up. On October 24th, 2013, when Iman came home, Tiffany told him that something was wrong with Imani. So he went into the bathroom and saw Imani having a seizure in the bathtub, just sitting in the tub, just shaking, eyes rolling back and forth, not responsive. But do you want to know what pisses me off? He didn't even try to take her down to the hospital like he should have did. 
Like, if I came home and my child was having a seizure in the bathtub, I would be freaking out. I'll be frantic. I'm trying to take him to the hospital to get this resolved. But no, he just put her in a blanket and put her back in her room. Four days later, on October 28th, 2013, like Tiffany told Iman that Imani died. And when he came home, he came home to seeing the other two kids playing, Tiffany watching TV, and went and then went into Imani's room and saw her in the bed dead. Now he wanted to call the police or like like get authorities involved, but Tiffany begged him not to because then they were gonna get arrested. Cause mind you, Tiffany was already on, still on probation for about five years for the 2010 incident. This was 2013, so she won't get she won't gonna get off probation until like 2015. So so they would be in hot water and they would also lose their kids, lose custody of their kids. So they come up with a plan to cover it up. So after Imani died, Iman moved her body into the computer room. And like between Halloween and November 1st, 2013, like he went out and got a galvanized trash can, some new sheets to put Imani, wrap up Imani's body, put her in the trash can. And they were going to drive out to some part of the city where they were going to burn her body. And that was kind of hard to fit her body in the trash can because it's been like three, four days since she died. Rigor mortis already kicked in. So they had to like, like compress her and bend her into like the trash can. So they found a spot, they had her in the trash can and, and set it on fire. But the thing is, after a few minutes, they realized that her body was not burning all the way. Because their plan was just like burn her till she was just ashes and move on with her lives. But that's not how human cremation works. So after, after like five minutes, they gave up, put her body back in the back of his car and just moved on with their lives. Now it got to the point where Iman was like, okay, this is enough. So he got when he got to work, he confessed to somebody at the, at work about what happened, and they were like, "Call the cops! Call the police! Come on, work, come on! Like you got cobwebs in your brain or something? Call the police!" So he did. Told him about what happened, that Imani had drank chemicals and died, and how suicidal he was. But when the cops found Imani in the trash can, and the state that her body was in. They called bullshit on that and arrested him immediately. Now, when Tiffany found out about Iman's plans to call the cops, she freaked out, got their two kids, and went on the run with them. So now Iman was in custody, and they're out looking for Tiffany, and now she's on the run. Until she eventually gave up, took her kids to her mom's house, and eventually turned herself in. In 2015, Iman would get sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. So that's so he's never getting out. But as for Tiffany, she said I had to take it all the way to trial. On April 15th, 2019, she went to trial. She, she was facing one count of malice murder, two counts of felony murder, two counts of cruelty to children, and one count of concealing a death. Now, this part about Tiffany's judgment confuses me because she had a few options for lawyers, but she turned them all down and decided to represent herself, despite her having no business to represent herself in a court of law. And also in court, the defense provided 18 witnesses, three of them were Imani's grandma, Robin, aunt, Sharonese, and her fourth grade teacher. And they also broke down, like, how... Imani's main cause of death was starvation. And th this was a homicide type of case. And, and the starvation was very painful for her to die. Cause it has like, it's, it's, it's in three parts. One, hunger pains. So she would just be hungry all the time, smell the food, forced to accept the fact that she couldn't have any. And then two, 
apathy fatigue and she can't her body can't function properly like she would have less energy get more sluggish and slow until she just can't hardly move no more and then the third one was when she would die from it is is it, and then we're at the point that it's too, it's too far gone and that she can't recover from it and that you know she's just gone and then come back from it Now, by late April of 2019, at about 36, Tiffany was found guilty of Imani's murder, but they were still trying to decide on a sentence for her. Like, they weren't sure about if she should do the whole life in prison or regardless of parole because she'd never change. Because Tiffany did not say much in court. Like, she just wasn't doing much. And she was just very much unrem unremorseful for what she did. And by May 1st, 2019, Tiffany was sentenced to death by lethal injection. And her, actually, and her execution date was scheduled for anywhere between June 7th and 14th, 2019. But it didn't happen then. It kept getting pushed back because she got the appeals thing. And we all know how long the appeals take. So it's going to take years for her to get executed. So Iman is doing his life sentence at the Smith State Prison in Glenville, Georgia, while Tiffany is awaiting execution at the Lee Arendelle State Prison. And once she is eventually executed, whenever that's going to be, she is going to be the third woman in Georgia to be executed since 1945 and is currently the only female death row inmate in the state. In 2018, Imani's grandmother, Robin, sued GDFCS because arguing that they knew about the abuse, they saw all the signs, yet they didn't do anything. They just let it happen and really weren't even trying to get it resolved. As of 2024, though, like, I haven't heard much about the lawsuit, so it's still pending. And and yeah, just not too much to say about that. And also, GDFCS employees employees were disciplined for it, and some fired, and rightfully so, because their job was to literally keep kids safe and stop all this from happening, and a little girl died because they didn't care. Now, Iman and Tiffany's children would get put in foster homes, despite like, bo like both of their parents right custody and from what i know now the kids are doing great and may never know about what actually happened to imani and by 2019 during the trial like their son tristan who was three when she died had some memories about it and he's doing good he's, he's doing good now from what i've what i've read now here are my thoughts but now, I'm glad that the justice system dealt with with Tiffany and Iman the way they did. Uh, he is in prison for the rest of his life, and now she's on death row right now, getting executed in some years' time. So I'm glad about that. But these like social services and stuff that are supposed to protect these kids, they gotta do better. And I'm not talking about every social worker like in the whole world, but. The one, like ones that do this because this isn't the only case and it's not the first case. It's just like it's just one of many, and this this is all I'm gonna cover it as of now. We're gonna hear more about it in the future because I have a whole list of cases to cover as well. But come on, they gotta do better. It's, like they're supposed to do everything hard to make sure that Imani didn't die, and she died. Yeah, I know it's easy to blame social workers and. And all of them, but Iman wouldn't have died if it wasn't for Tiffany and Iman. Like Iman could have protected her. Uh, he, I know, I know he wasn't home too much, but he saw the signs when he was home. He saw the signs, yet he just ignored it. Like he didn't care. So he's a punk for that. Like how could you not try to protect your daughter and then you want to cover up her murder? What the what? I'm sorry, but what the hell is wrong with you? You're supposed to be protecting your daughter. 
and you let this woman kill her, that what the hell is wrong with you? So I hope this punk rots in prison the rest of his life like, and is haunted with the guilt that it's partly his fault that his daughter is dead. And as for Tiffany, <laughs> Tiffany Moss, I hope, I hope she's having a miserable time in prison and for everything she did, I like to abuse this girl, this girl that didn't do anything to her. And I hope this bitch rots in hell for the rest of her day. And I hope she feels all the fire when she's down there. Because that's exactly what she deserves. Like, she better feel the pain while she's down there. Yeah, this bitch needs to rot in, needs to rot in hell for what she did. And Imani, just rest in peace. Rest in peace, Imani. Anyway, that's all I got to say. And I'll be back in the future with more true crime videos. And like and subscribe. See you. Bye.